Need to look loaded when you're really only about half full? Welcome to the world of secondhand luxury and depreciated sports cars. Don't let a Camry kill your soul. Hit the used market and tell yourself that the outdated accessories are retro and save some pennies for maintenance. Here are sports cars where the only bank you need to break is one shaped like a piggy. For most people, $69,000 for an early model Lamborghini Gallardo is plenty expensive for a car or anything else. For that kind of money, you could score a range-topping Charger or a Mercedes-Benz GLC brand new off the lot. But what's another Charger in the parking lot? And an SUV is just a minivan in denial. If your mad money tops out at 70 grand, but you were hoping for six-figure looks, then a used Lamborghini Gallardo is the car you're looking for. Part of that value comes with the parts it shares with another car coming up on our list. In 1998, the Volkswagen Group bought Lamborghini from a pair of investment companies where the company had begun to flounder. The Lambo brand was put under the car of VW's Audi, and things began to turn around for the Italian supercar maker. Among these changes was the entry-level Lamborghini with normal doors and a V10 that it shared with Audi's R8. The success of the $175,000 baby Lambo funded the more traditional V12 monster Lamborghinis, the Murcielago and the Aventador. Don't let the German connection fool you, though. It's still a Lamborghini. Estimates for cost to drive are anywhere from $1 to $2,000 per mile, but that doesn't mean you're likely to get a low-mileage example. So maybe you're willing to sacrifice some of those big bucks looks for a car whose parts aren't made out of unobtainium, or at the very least doesn't have a clutch with a 35,000 mile lifespan and proprietary software that means only Lamborghini techs can install a new one. Then the Gallardo's Stablemate is the car for you. Created to commemorate the unprecedented dominance of Audi's Le Mans prototype race car, the R8 is a legit supercar from the company that had otherwise been a luxury and sports sedan company. The R8 puts its V10 in the same place as the Gallardo and comes in both coupe and spider, which is just a fancy way of saying convertible. The National Automobile Dealers Association, or NADA, puts the average value of a 2007 Audi R8 at $53,000. Still a lot, but less than half than its $110,000 asking price when new. You lose that sexy Lamborghini badge, but in return, you're driving a car favored by Tony Stark. While it's not a Lamborghini, it's still an Audi, and once again, maintenance is an issue. Carfax estimates the cost of ownership to be around $2,500 to $3,000 a year. Tony Stark might be the new cool, but maybe you're looking for a classic cool, a dignified cool, the kind of cool that can make ordering a martini sound extra cool. For that, you have to head to England for an Aston Martin. Sure, James Bond might have driven lots of cars, including at one point, half a Renault 11. But the one we all know and love is that Aston Martin DB5. DB5s, however, command half a million dollars. In the upcoming Bond film, as well as the classic Bond, we'll buckle up with a new Aston Martin Vantage. Good news for high five-figure bargain hunters wanting six-figure looks. NADA estimates that $52,000 will get you a formerly $119,000 2009 Vantage. The Vantage stands as what a British person's idea of what a muscle car is. The Vantage is powered by a V8 engine that was borrowed from Mercedes-Benz's mad science division, AMG. This styling hunk of British beef delivers a grunt counterpoint to the DB model's V12 whale. In what will become a familiar refrain, however, if you're not paying up front, you're paying big to use it. YouTuber Doug DeMuro estimated one year of used Vantage ownership cost him just shy of 10 grand, and it would have been more without the $3,000 certified used warranty. One of the ways that Joe Walsh knows that life has been good to him is that his Maserati does 185. Of course, that's because his hit songs made him new Maserati buying money. We can't all have written Life in the Fast Lane, though, so we don't have brand new Maserati money. Fortunately, two things happened. First, Fiat acquired Maserati and placed them firmly below their former rival, Ferrari. Second, they started producing some very popular cars. Basic supply and demand, there are a lot of older Maserati Gran Turismos out there. So you can make a first generation yours for $33,900, according to NADA. That's a steep discount off the $117,000 sticker price for an 11-year-old Maserati. That gets you 433 horsepower that will see you doing 60 miles per hour in four and a half seconds, and eat a quarter mile in 13 seconds, cresting 120 miles per hour. You'll be just shy of Joel Walsh's Maserati at 183. You're still in an Italian exotic, though. So it also comes with regular maintenance windows that start at $1,600 and 800 just to change the oil. 
JDM fans have always known the skyline, but games like Gran Turismo and Forza introduced the formerly Japan-only supercar, growing its fanbase. It grew enough, in fact, for Nissan to eventually bring the GTR to our shores. Before that, the closest that American could get to a skyline was an Infiniti G35 which was a rebadged Skyline, just not the hot GTR version that the people playing Gran Turismo wanted. Rather than wait on Nissan or look for a gray market import, people started upcycling their G35s to get closer to their Skyline GTR cousins. Unlike the depreciated second-hand luxury, price is a matter of how far you want to go and how much the donor G35 costs. Modifications have been as simple as updated bumpers and as complex as the Vador G35 kit that turns your staid infinity into something else entirely. The Vador kit is $11,000, but there's some assembly required. If you're handy and have the tools, you could end up driving away in a car that looks like nothing else for under 20 grand. That's if you're handy and have the tools. At least you'll know who to blame when the front quarter panel falls off. The Fisker Karma was an attempt to get an early start on the switch to cleaner and more efficient sports cars. Before Porsche 918s were getting 70 mpg with almost 900 horsepower, the Fisker Karma set out to be the premier hybrid sports car. This isn't new. Startup companies have tried to reinvent the sports car often with less than overwhelming results. For every Lamborghini that thinks everyone is doing sports cars wrong, there's a Bricklin or DeLorean that got so unique that they forget they should go fast. That's certainly the case with the Fisker Karma. Despite its dead sexy looks, the numbers aren't going to win you any beach racing matches. The combined 400 horsepower was no match for the car's 5,300 pound curb weight. While it's good for 50 miles to the gallon and 32 miles of gas-free driving on a full charge, 0 to 60 came on a paltry 6 seconds and tops out at 125. Still good enough to get Justin Bieber a reckless driving speeding ticket. If you feel that if it's good enough for Bieber, it's good enough for you, then don't worry. You don't need a chart-topping hit. The price for a 2012 Fisker sits around 30 to 40 grand. This may be personal bias, but there are few cars on the road as dead sexy as the Jaguar F-Type. Seeing as it's following the lineage of the legendary E-Type, it's had big shoes to fill. The car has been an instant success for Jaguar, prompting an avalanche of praise from journalists lucky enough to get the chance to run one through the paces. With that exhaust note and clean feline lines on the car, it was easy to justify the 80000 for the S-Coupe. A used 2016 S-Coupe will cost you less than half of that. Worse than just being a high-tuned exotic, though, this is a Jaguar. Not known for their reliability, the F-Type gets J.D. Power's second lowest rating. Or, to quote the Jaguar team in the movie Gumball Rally, it's a beautiful design, just wish it ran. Purists, by their very nature, are an intractable lot. Porsche purists are among the most devout in that area. For them, there are rules. A 911 has a distinct shape. The engine hangs off the back, and the only thing that should cool the engine should be the air. In 1996, the latest version of the long-lived sports car committed more than one hearsay. It looked too much like the down-market Boxster with its much-hated fried egg headlights. It was bigger by a bunch, now more of a grand tourer than a sports car. Worst of all, it was using that devil water to cool the engine. It was also plagued by a faulty intermediate shaft bearing that could be spendy to replace. But it was the water in the headlights that drove up the prices of its predecessor, the 993, and down the prices of the 996, way down. As the prices of just about every other used 911 have been reaching the stratosphere, used 996s can be had for as little as 12 grand. For that low a price, why not reach for the 420 horsepower turbo, which NADA places at about 26 grand? Alfa Romeo has a habit of making really, really good-looking cars. While they were away from American shores, they didn't lose that habit. So when they came back, they gave us a mid-engine roadster that looks like desire if it had four wheels. Numbers like a 4.5 second run to 60 and a 160 top speed don't tell the tale of the driving experience of a proper Alfa Romeo. How effective is that experience? In its review for the 2016 model, Road & Track listed problems like a clunky top mechanism on the Spider, a difficult transmission, troubled steering, a cramped cabin, and poor visibility, and concluded that none of that mattered. If none of that matters to you, you can get a used one for half off the $70,000 starting price, but make sure you got money coming in because it's still an Alpha, and without depreciation, the five-year cost of ownership can be as much as you paid for the car outright. BMW doesn't seem to know what the future holds, so it's putting chips on everything. Their upcoming i4 is set to outpace its already legendary M cars on nothing but electricity, while they also continue to develop hydrogen in the hopes that it's not the Betamax of future fuels. 
They have not been quick to jump on the hybrid wagon except for a sports car that looks like it jumped out of a sci-fi movie. The i8 combines a three-cylinder engine with two electric motors for a combined 369 horsepower engine that will launch your Jetson's car to 60 in 4.1 seconds while returning 35 miles per gallon during the car and driver test. As the i8 fades into the past for BMW, it can fade into your garage for 50 grand, a third of the price new. BMWs have some of the highest maintenance costs outside Marinello, but the list is full of those. The only real drawback here is that 50K is still a lot of money.